what do you think it means to be a Canadian Muslim youth? Okay. Um. Let me think. <laughs> I have an answer for it. Let me give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> Damn, I thought I had the answer down, but now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wait. Canada is Canada's pretty big, so it's very difficult to identify what, even what Canadian Muslim means. Who am I and what am I doing here? This question has plagued us all from our early teenage years through to adulthood. But what if you were trying to answer this question while headlines of death, destruction, and evil were all tied to you simply because of your religion, culture, or the clothes you chose to wear? This is the reality for Muslim youth across Canada whose struggle in understanding who they are has been compounded by the global conflict we see all around us. This new challenge has led to a rise in identity confusion and impaired identity construction. After all, how can a person feel worthy or proud of who they are when all they hear in school is that they aren't real Canadian, or even worse, that they don't deserve to be here? But what has life actually been like for Muslim youth growing up in Canada? And how do they form their identities? This is exactly what the Canadian Muslim Youth Identity Project aimed to answer. In an SSHRC-funded project, Dr. Amir Jamal led a team of social work researchers who sat down with these youth both individually and in focus groups. This has been such an exciting and meaningful journey with Canadian Muslim youth across Canada. Together, we reflected and explored those deep-rooted, complex questions that how do Canadian Muslim youth construct, negotiate, and maintain their individual, communal, religious, and transnational identities? Like, what are those key factors that impact their identity development process? For example, gender, religion, education, family background, experiences of discrimination, Racism and oppression in Canada. We collaborated with Muslim organizations, student association and various communities across Canada. We respectfully engaged Muslim youth, listened to their stories, their challenges and their aspirations. Most of them shared that this was the first time ever that someone sat with them to reflect on these issues, on these critical issues to have a conversation on the complex nature of their identity and their challenges and their well-being. But we wanted to do more. We wanted to share with the world the voices of these youth. So we decided to create digital stories of these Canadian Muslim youth through online interview podcasts. Hesitant at first, many participants told us that they felt more empowered afterwards, that this was the first time they felt heard by the world. We created a website to share with the greater Canadian community the findings of this project and how they can support Canadian Muslim youths in their own communities. In the end, this is just the first step to supporting identity formation in Canadian Muslim youth. Engaging community and religious leaders, educational leaders, and policymakers are all vital to making sure that future generations of Canadian Muslim youth do not grow up with the same battles for their place in Canada that previous generations suffered. Building bridges and forming connections is the path forward for a united and accepting Canada that supports all its youth, regardless of who they are.